have that filled in. Okay, now I'm going to Alt or Option click on it again, hit the X key, and I'm going to paint white in this area to fix what I just did. Now, let's go to the parking light. That's supposed to be an orange parking light. So let me now make this back. I hit the X key, so I'm painting black on the layer mask, and it's removing the hue and saturation adjustment. See how it's just taking it away? I'm painting with a semi-hard brush at nearly 100%. Now, to make this file go really fast, I want you to paint out, listen to what I'm saying, I want you to paint out the headlights. I, I'm going to do it again. So I'm painting the headlight, even though it doesn't look like anything is happening. If your headlight had colors in it, those true colors, did you hear that word true? Those true colors would be showing. Now look at how I made another boo-boo right there. So I'm going to make the brush smaller, and I'm going to, f whoops, I have to hit the X key, and now let's put it back in. So I'm painting it back in really nicely here. And I want you to see that anything else that needs to be painted out, let's hit the X key and put this black back on here. See, there was a little bit of color inside this. There was a nice color that I had been tinting and I didn't like it. Now, I didn't do a very good job of painting that, so I'll option click on it again and I'll fill it in a little bit. And there's another way that I can actually see the image below it, but it's not that important to show you at the moment. Okay, it isn't. I promise. Just click back and forth to Alt or Option on the layer mask. Now, I'm doing a real nice job by painting everything out. Now, if I have to go paint out the mirrors and paint out other windows like this, this whole window I have ruined. The whole window I've took out the nice window color. I'll even make another mistake right there. Because what I want to do is just fill it all in nice to all the windows and get all their nice color back. Now let's go fix my boo-boos. Let's make the brush smaller. Let's hit the X key and let's paint white back on the layer mask of the hue and saturation adjustment layer. It's not a big deal. Please don't make it one. So now I'm turning off and on the hue and saturation. All I did was paint black on this layer mask so that the hue and saturation doesn't affect certain parts of the car. Now what I want to do is turn this off completely and this off completely because what I want to do is show you what I've already done. So I'm going to put this car back in here. Here is my car that has everything in it. Now I had to add one layer to this which is what I want you to do. I want you to see how the bottom or the molding of your car, and please do this for me, is mine is neutral. Now when I get it into this warm colored background, I'll bring it on the screen, when I get it into this warm colored background, if I don't add a warm value over this, it's going to look really wrong. And I'll show it to you what it looks like when it's really wrong. But in order to do that, I have to explain something to you and I don't want it to take forever. These paths are going to stay in this file. Got it? If I were to change the position of this car in relation to the canvas behind it, these paths wouldn't line up anymore, right? So I want to create a brand new layer like this one that I'm turning off and on. I'll close this and show you how I did it. So I'm going to turn this back on. I'm going to go make a brand new layer above this hue and saturation layer. And by the way, I want to clip this hue and saturation layer to the car. So it's clipped to the car. I'm also going to clip this layer in a minute to the car. But I'm going to add a blank layer mask to it. So, so far this is just a nothing layer with a nothing layer mask. Do you follow what I'm saying? But I am going to make sure that everything including the background of this layer mask is black. So first I'm going to just paint it black. Boom! I just painted it all black. See I went command or control delete. It's all black. Now whatever is the, are the tires and the molding including this mirror here I would actually go back in and re-expose them to whatever color I'm eventually going to add on this layer when I bring this layer into the other file. I want you to watch how I do that. So, got to think like Photoshop and eventually you will. But, I'm now going to use my selections. So I'm going to turn off this car so you can see what I'm doing. 
I'm going to make a selection of the car, the overall car. I'll turn this off. See the selection? I should change this back to black, but I'm not, I don't think I'm going to. I'm now going to show you that if I subtract this path from this selection, I will only have the bottom of the car exposed. You, feel, you know what I'm saying? So if I hold the Alt or Option key and Command, I'll subtract the top half from the bottom half. Now, I'm going to go back to this layer mask, so I turn on all my images here, and I'm going to go back to this layer mask up here. You're not going to see anything happen yet, okay? But I need to make sure that before I go into the other file, I could use those paths. So now I want to fill it with white. So Option Delete and I filled it with white. Now I'm going to Option Click on it so you can see what I'm talking about. I actually now have where that bumper and the tires are going to be as a layer that if I add color to this, it's going to work and it's only going to affect those items. I should actually show you that here in this file so it makes sense to you. So I will. But I'm going to then delete it out of here. If I wanted this bumper to have a purple tint, did you hear what I said? I'm going to click to the actual layer, not the layer mask. I'm going to change the color to a purple. I'll make it I'm going to say green. I'm going to say ugly green. Okay, so let's just make sure I fill up this with a green. So option delete and fill it up. You see how I added green where all of that was? Now watch how neat this is. If I take this and I put it on a mode all the way to the bottom of color, whatever was black in the bumper is going to be 100% of this green. And look at how it just marries beautifully, ugly, but beautifully with the bottom of the car. Now, if I gently remove and only show a little bit, do you see how I barely tinted the bumper and the tire and everything else with green? But the red of the car wasn't affected because I filled the layer mask with black and then I filled the area which was to be the um, molding and the tires with white. Now, I want to show you that by Option or Alt clicking on it. See, only that area allows the green to be shown. And I've taken the opacity of the green and I made it really gentle. Now, in this case, for the car, I'm going to make it a warm value. So, watch how I could click to a warm value. I'm going to click on the image click this horrible color to a warmer value, something in this neighborhood right here, right here. And I'm going to go Option Delete and fill it up. Now, do you see how I've changed that? I'll Command Z back and forth. That's green. That's a beautiful warm value. Do you see that? Now, if I take it away, it's neutral. So, a color mode takes the black that you have inside the tires and it lets it show through all the way and it takes the white that's in the rim and wherever white is remember white um, black eliminates and white retains so in this case what white is going to do is it's not going to allow because it's a zero percent darkness it's not going to allow any of this brown to show because it's a zero percent brown there follow what I'm saying where black is it's a hundred percent brown and then where gray is it's whatever percentage the gray is that that's where the brown shows so what I should do is command A to select all and delete the brown off that layer so I can make the decision with the other one. Now I have this file completely opened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend I'm closing it now and I'm going to go to show you the one I did before. It's the same one you did now. Okay, same one. I'm just turning it off and on so you can see it and I'm turning off this car so it's a white background. There. I made a folder of all those layers. So this is what I want you to do with yours. I want you to make a new layer folder. I'll move it below the one I did. I'm going to call it Jeep 2 because I have two Jeeps now. And I'm going to grab all of these things right here. Not that one. I only need this one. Um, command click this layer. Command click this layer. And let's, I'll even bring this other bottom one and let's put them inside this Jeep number 2. Now I would save the file, right? Now I only want two files opened on my screen at the moment. So I'm going to hit the F key and I'm going to close every other tab that's on here. So this one, um, 
I'm actually going to recreate this so I really don't need it. It's my number one ad, so I'm going to say save and then it's closed. Okay, then I want this one, which that's the JPEG. I don't need that. Op whoops, I did the wrong one. Oh, shoot. I think I just closed the wrong one, Mr. Silly. Okay, that's ad number two. That's JPEG number 11. I have to go back and reopen that other one. I'm a silly man. Okay, that's the one I didn't want to open. Okay, now I have to go back and get that other one, which should be... Gosh, I sure hope I've been saving. <laughs> ah, Mr. Sorio. Okay, Jeep number two. Do you know that I don't think I saved it? I'm going to have to fake it out and let's just use the one that I had before. Oh my God, I did a bad thing in front of you. I am so horrible. So let me see Sorio Jeep ad. Okay, I'll get it back. That's all right. I didn't save it. That's okay. This is just a test. So I'll turn on, I'll make sure that this is a white background again. Or it doesn't really matter if I do a white background. I'm basically exactly where I was before. So let me go right here. Okay. So there is my Jeep. I'll turn on the white background. And now this transparent Jeep is what I want to bring into the other file. So I only have two open. This one, which is going to get the Jeep, and this one, which has the Jeep. So I go to the Jeep. I right hand click and duplicate the entire group. I'll bring over the window to the ad. Now, I can close this one basically, but I'll click over to here. Now there's your Jeep and it's up in the air. And I want you to see what the heck happened way out here and why that looks so weird. Okay, so um, I'm gonna move this up to the top and I'm gonna open up the Jeep and I'm gonna show you that these two things I need to really make you understand this. So I'm going to open it up wider. Do you see where the mask is? This is what colored or is going to color the lower half of my metal and bumper and wheels on the Jeep. So I'll kind of, I don't want to zoom in too much, okay? I really don't. This is actually now what colored the Jeep from blue to red. But do you see the mask? Because I brought this into a bigger file, I need to take black over to the edge of this and I just optioned or alt clicked on it but I really don't if I just hold the option key and I clip that layer to the bottom one which already has black all the way to the edge and I clip it to this here I now have solved my issue now my job is to turn on that other layer which doesn't have any color on it and I can take the V key click on the entire I don't want to click on one layer inside I want to click on the whole folder and move it into position now it's up to you where you put it okay I want to move this up to the top and get this out of the way as much as possible okay and let's go like this okay fine okay now this is my ad number two I am gonna go back to the ad number one because I really don't feel like redrawing a couple of things but in order to place this in here, um, I can actually go get those, but that's okay. I, I'm thinking out loud, okay? So I'm going to hit Command T on this car. Now what it does, or this Jeep, it transforms it. So I can figure out by tilting it and making it bigger. I want the wheel to rest on this part here. I want, um, by me, it's right here. I'm going to hold the Shift key and make this bigger, and I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to see where I want this to actually do the resting on it. Um, okay, so I had that. Maybe I didn't go that big on it. Let me hold the shift key and make it slightly smaller. Oh, that's what I did. Okay, so this, this I wanted up on that rock right there, a little smaller. And this I wanted on that rock right here. So... I am in the perfect position of where I want this. Go ahead and put yours anywhere. Now we have to make slight adjustments. So now save your file and save every time you do a good thing. Okay? Now, the next thing. I need to cut a hole in these windows. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, see this path palette in this file has nothing in it? Not a thing. I'm going to go open up my other ad if I can get to it real fast. Ad number one. Yes. Now, let me, uh, that's the JPEG. Okay, I opened up the wrong one. 
let's go to open up add I need the actual add so I've opened up so many of these add number one PSD okay I'm gonna go steal these windows but you're going to draw them now let me zoom in and let me turn off the text on this okay so what you need to do is you need to go cut a hole in I'll show you you need to go cut a hole in this right here can you see it and let me close this Jeep because I don't need it anymore and I'll save it now I'm gonna go get these paths so click on this path hit the P key Brian for pen I'm going to hold the command key and marquee that path now the neat part about this is Photoshop remembers position so if I go command C to copy and click to the other path I can go command V to paste and it just about pasted in the right thing now I'm so glad it just did what it did because what it did was it made a vector shape and I didn't want it to make a vector shape so I'm gonna command Z back I don't want it to go into this Jeep layer I just so I deselected it I'm gonna make sure that over here it doesn't paste as a shape it pastes as a path but I want nothing selected over here when I paste it okay that's I'm so glad some of this stuff happens so let me hit command V to paste and now you can see it pasted in beautifully I take the P key I marquee this I hit command T and look at how I can take a path from one file and reposition it and I'll even now reshape the path by coming in here like this and moving it up and if and probably this is going to take too long but that's okay let me um, zoom this down and turn it slightly and that's just about right and let me toggle it over a little bit okay that looks really good a little bit too deep on the bottom and let's go get the other paths now I'm gonna call this window one notice I didn't leave it as work path so I called it window one now let's go to the other file and I'm gonna do it again so I click on the outer windows so now I'm gonna go grab this path so I'm in the pen tool I hold the command key and I marquee all of these here and hit command C to copy I now click on the other one no layer is selected I'm gonna click away from this click away from it and command V to paste so another work path comes in I now I'm gonna command uh, hold the command key on the pen marquee so the points are solid by holding the command key and making a box hit the command T to free transform those and let's make them slightly bigger my car is slightly bigger than it was before and let me put this in here like this turn it so that this lines up as best I can I'll put it in the corner here which is where I'm looking now I can grab this and I should be able to position this around the rearview mirror around that corner there let's move this up a little bit and get it into here um, this needs to move over slightly and I am wow really good okay so let me hit save now I have to go to this I'm gonna click on it I'm gonna option click on this I can't see through this car that I am on this layer with I can't see through to that background okay I can't can't see through to it because the car is in the way so I have to add black or a level of gray to this mask so I'm option or alt clicking on it so I'm not gonna do that anymore I'm gonna double click this and make it say window 2 and then before I go any farther I'm gonna save the file would you write this down somewhere in your memory please please every three saves would you go to edit purge all and that purges all the RAM from your machine and it refreshes Photoshop so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go to edit purge all now Photoshop's gonna work faster so would you write that down please thank you now I'm going to command click the first one and I'm going to click to the layer mask I need to change the attributes of my brush I need to make my paintbrush which is the B key I'm toggling the brush bigger the flow make sure your opacity is at a hundred and I'm gonna put the flow to five only five and hit the return key now I don't want to go with a hard brush I want it extremely soft 
So put it all the way to soft, hit the return key. So that was a right hand click, all the way soft, return key. And now I'm going to get close on this window. I don't necessarily want to see these silly things here. Okay, I see I'm going to have a problem on the bottom, I think, but actually I think it'll be alright. Because I'm not going to take off too much. I'm going to hit Command H to hide the selection. It did not deselect it. So I'm going to now click the X key so my foreground color is black. And do you see how I'm removing some, not all, of the car from there? Now the back windows of this Jeep are tinted, so they're darker. So I'm not going to remove as much from these two. So I go to the path palette and I make a selection of the back area. Hit Command H to hide it. Write that down. Command H hides a selection. And now I'm going to just gently paint in here so we see a little bit of the mountain through the back. But it's not as much as on the first one. So the, wind so the back windows look more tinted. Okay. Now basically all we have to do, and I'm going to hit the F key to expand this to the screen so I can move it around, is we have to add a shadow to the car. So I'm going to Command Z back. I'm um, sorry, Command S to save the file. So I like the way the car is. Now let's put it on the ground. Now what I did was I drew a very simple path. I'll redraw it for you so you see how simple it is. Now in order to draw correctly, I'm going to minimize the background opacity so I can see the silly pen. Okay, I still see the ground, but you can now see what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to shrink the layer palette a little bit to the side to get more room on screen. So watch what I do. I am going to make a path come around, come around this car like this. And I'm going to have it kind of fall down the rock here. Okay, I'm going to have it come to the front of the car like this, come around this rock, come to the front of the car like this, come around like that. I'm going to have it come over to here, up, let me see back, I want to take it right to this edge right here. Now I'm going to come up the rock, I'll come over to this rock over here, I'll come around to this part here, come around like this, come around down like this, come around up the rock and over to the edge of that rock and I'll just make it make sense. Now I'm going to gosh and blur this so much that any kind of weirdness that you think I might have with the look of this, look at how I'm coming all the way underneath the car. Okay, I'm going to call this shadow. Oops, I don't know how to spell shadow. And it's really shadow one, okay, because now I need to add a layer. Now where does the layer go? Um, we're going to make a layer above the background, which I should have named background. I'm terrible. So there's my background. I have everything la um, labeled correctly. And let's call this shadow 1, because I'm going to have a little bit of a shadow 2. Whoops, that didn't go in there. Let me do it again. Okay. Now I save the file again. Now let's turn this into a selection, and I'm going to fill it with hard, 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 hard paint. I'm not going to try to feather it. Okay, so I'm going to go Command Click. Now I need the opacity to come all the way back up. And in, then I will go add that color to the bumper so it looks nice. Right now that bumper doesn't look nice. And I'll show you how a color will look nice on the bumper. Okay, so one more time, Command S to save. Notice I'm paranoid. If I hit the B key, I can hold the Option key and sample this dark, dark brown. I'm going to make it a very dark, dark brown. Now I'm going to fill up the shadow layer by clicking to it and Option Delete and clicking. Um, I don't know why, but the opacity of that layer went to 10%. So I'm going to click and I'm going to go Option Delete and Fill. Now let's deselect. That's a little dark, don't you think? Well, before we even worry about how dark it is, let's take some opacity from it. So I have the opacity like this. Now, let's click back on the layer and add a Gaussian blur. And let's not, let's Gaussian blur it to the most of what it's supposed to be. So I actually like the Gaussian blur at 24 pixels. I think this looks really nice. A little bit less maybe. Let's go to about that much right there. Okay. Now, I've lost some of my shadow effect and it's a little bit too dark right in here. Okay, so I'm going to add a layer mask to the shadow. 
all right? Make the brush bigger. It's only painting on five, so uh, which is the flow, and I'm painting black, and you see how I can lighten up on the shadow very nicely. Now, I want to add a more severe shadow part by the tires, and then it'll look really nice, and it'll lay on the ground beautifully, okay? That's what it did look like. This is what it does look like now. Let me add another layer above that and call this shadow two. Now this is going to get very minimal amount of paint. So I click, I'm going to go to the B key, I'm going to make the brush. Um, something is opened, oh my tolerance, oh I, well, I just clicked, um, my finger hit the wrong button. So I'm going to hit the B key now and let's go down to a smaller shadow, a smaller brush. Still right hand click and I'm all the way soft okay that's beautiful and now I'm gonna go grab that same black and look what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna increase the shadow by the tire here now that set that on the ground beautifully now look at how this front tire doesn't set on the ground okay I'm gonna add this little bit of darkness right there and look at how that completely set that tire on the ground. Now it should be a little bit darker where I'm showing you right here. So let's add a little bit more darkness there. And look at this front tire. It does not set on the ground. So now let's just add a little bit of shadow right to here. And look at how I'm moving it backwards like this. And look at how that front tire totally sets on the ground. Look at how gorgeous that is. Now I can click back to the... God, I could have sworn I named that shadow too. It's okay. Save the file again, Command S to save. Now if I wanted to, I could go back in here and I could remove the opacity from the shadow a little bit more to let that come in and gosh, does that look nice. I mean, that really looks nice. Now let's fix the bumper area. Let's open our Jeep and you remember that layer that I told you about? Well, I'm going to change this warm value right here. In fact, I'm gonna sample it, I'm canceling. I'm going to hit the B key and I'm going to sample this color right about da -da 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 here. And I'm going to fill up this completely, the whole thing. Just fill it up. Option delete, boom. Now, I want to go back and take that and put it on a color mode, not a normal mode. Color mode. Then I want to remove almost all the opacity out of it way down to about uh, just that much right here. Now, look at how nice that marries together. Let me turn that off and look at how that's neutral. Now that has a little bit of warmth in it and it's absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Let me save the file and now let's add our text to it, okay? Now, it's time to know where the text goes. So it's time to go put your 24 by 12 frame in here, okay? So I'm gonna use a marquee. The marquee is set. When you're ready to put in your guides, go change the marquee, not to normal, but to fixed ratio and put in 24 by 12. Draw a box from one side to the other, leaving about a quarter inch on both sides. Now, look at how I can move this around inside of it, and it lets me now play with the placement. Now, I'm gonna pull a guide down to here, I'm going to pull a guide down to the bottom. I'm going to pull a guide and I made my guides white. If you like your guides in a different color, so be it. Let's go over here and pull a guide out here. Now let me command D to deselect and you can see how I have my guides showing me where my text should go. Now what I did was, and I'll go tell you, I'm not going to take a lot of time to do this, but I'm going to um, go to my ad now and I'm going to show you what I did, okay? So let's go to the other ad. And now I'll back off on it. It's about the same thing that I had before and I'm going to turn on the text. Now all I did was I took the text tool and I typed. Here is my elevate. I um, had the text tool like this. Now if I'm selected on that layer and you want to type a large piece of text, I'm going to give you a trick. Leave it selected on that layer. I'll duplicate it so I don't mess this up. Okay, And I'm going to turn off the bottom one. I'm going to throw away the top one in a second. But as long as I'm selected on this, watch a cool trick in Photoshop. 
if I marquee this or triple click inside I can change the look of that text by using my cursor arrows and I can go see what text looks good in there so as long as you have the layer selected you don't have to double click it whoops you don't have to double click it like this you don't have to just leave it selected double click the name of the text in the character palette and then just use your cursor keys and you can go check out all your text and that's why I wanted to throw this away so I'm gonna move this down and we're gonna throw that away now I kind of liked it I this my I said elevate your life and what I did was the V was too far away from the A and I want to tell you about letter kerning so I took my T key whoops whoop, 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 whoop. let me go back okay Mr. Sorio let me get out of that well, I sure did mess that up. Elevate. Okay, I need to throw that away again. Okie dokie. So now I have the word elevate selected and I want to do my text maneuver inside of it. So I click my cursor to be inside that right there. If you go hold the option or alt key and you use the left or right arrows, do you see how you can adjust kerning between character shapes? Don't let a computer adjust kerning please look at how I need to hit the move tool I wanna use the spacebar to to move over but if I touch the spacebar I'm just gonna add a space right there so I'm gonna command Z back and option command Z back and click now I'm gonna command Z back completely and that should come back in so now I can but click away from the text tool click the move tool then click back to the text tool and do your next thing see how the O is too far away from the Y I'm gonna click inside of this and go option and I'm gonna readjust that a little farther over then I'm gonna take the move tool and click so I'm now on that layer see how I'm on that layer right there and I'm gonna use my cursor keys and cursor the your your life over now what I did was I then brought in um, I brought in my logo and I must have gotten rid of my logo layer which is okay um, I actually wanted my smart filters to actually touch my oh I have to click away from it um, I'm gonna go bring in the logo layer again and I'm not exactly sure why it didn't I wanted the inversion process to take place there and I don't exactly know what I did to it so um, I'm going to go bring in the logo again anyway so I'll just turn this off so I'm going to go to um, hit the F key and let's go back to my folder let's open up the logos and I actually brought in the logo that was gosh I already forgot let's go bring in the logo that is the um, only in a Jeep logo so what I did was I opened up only in a Jeep logo it's that one and I right hand clicked and I opened in Photoshop I now right hand clicked and what I did here was I needed to have that be solid black because it's kind of a dingy gray so I went command L and I'm gonna move this over and I went just like this and I'm gonna move this just like that over so the black is nicely saturated now if I want to okay I don't really need to mess up this file and there's so many ways to do this I could take this and duplicate this layer if I wanted to turn off the bottom one click the top one and hit command I to invert the top one see how I did that it says several ways to do this so now it's white I right hand click and I duplicate that layer to my ad say okay go back to my ad and I have my logo back in white could always click on the layer and just hit command I to invert if I wanted to but I take the V key I move it over I hit command T on that oops it's on the wrong one um, let me hit the return key let me click away okay now let's um, I need to deselect and oh because I had that selected let's go command T why is it only doing that oh this is so oh because it's on the path oh that's so good I'm so glad that happened oh my gosh um, let me hit the return key do you see how I am trying to use command T on a layer 
but goofy old me has a path selected over in the path palette this is stuff that happens all the time if you have a path selected Photoshop takes precedence on the path not the layer so I need to deselect now if I hit command T I'm actually transforming the silly logo and I'll take it and I'll move it and I'll move this over and I'll lift this up and I'll put this in. Now the reason why I can't move the whole file is I have to hit the F key to cascade this to full screen but because I have it selected in a transform this logo is not doing it. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna hit the return key then hit the F key then I can hold the space bar down and move it over then I can command T back on the logo and put the silly thing back in position. Now what I wanted to show you was I'm gonna look at my file and you can see where I put an elevate in life and I added a minor drop shadow to the elevate in life that's still too big over here for the logo let me go down in size put it in position and now let's move it over and you can see how my margin on the top is pretty similar to my margin on the side uh, to on the bottom and let me move this over and let's get a nice thing going on there and that is how I did it now if I need to and I want you to see something that I did to cheat here so I'm gonna move this down when I had the logo in there and let me take the logo here the logo here let me close the logo close the effect on the logo let me take um, the logo here and rename this logo to and let me close the effects in that logo um, I can take that logo and throw this away now that's all right with me and now what I did was I had to have the word elevate your life separate now all I did was paint a little blue do you see the layer that I painted it on it's not a big deal okay I'll show you how I did it I'm gonna turn it off and turn on another layer and um, I now have this layer which I should actually name this blue in background and I'm going to throw this layer away in a second but I had it selected with nothing no selection active I'm going to hit the B key make the brush huge we're gonna grab the same blue that's in that mountain and I'm gonna just gently at 5% paint a little bit of blue behind the word elevate now that didn't hurt the background and it only made the text separate absolutely beautifully okay so I'm gonna throw away that layer I'm going to click onto the background and you can see there's my ad now I save the file and all you need to do now is leave this alone and this is the file that you're gonna Dropbox me okay I don't mind you don't have to do what I'm about to do I'm gonna crop it I'm gonna make a JPEG of it so right now I'm gonna call this ad number two JPEG so I'm gonna command shift s I'm gonna go change it to a JPEG which will flatten all the layers by itself I'm gonna call this add number two make sure I don't have another one in there nope I don't and I'm gonna go like that and then go like this and then I'm done I'm done I go back in and I'm gonna use the JPEG and I'm gonna crop it to the right size got it you follow what I'm saying so let's command W on this and save that file now let's command W on this and not save the logo this is my other one I'm gonna command W on this and save that file just because I like it and now here is my let's go back to here and let me make this window smaller and now let's go into the JPEG so I right hand click and open the JPEG with Photoshop let's open this up now silly me <laughs> no well I'm not silly it's actually good no it's actually good so I'm gonna move it down command semicolon removes the guides okay but I want to use the crop tool to the guides so I made the crop tool actually have a 24 by 12 boundary so again if I just marquee this and move over it's gonna give me a perfect 24 by 12 crop I'll move it down slightly with one and double click inside there's your file command semicolon to remove the guides command s to save the file let's move it down let's take it I don't think I've forgotten anything on this double click the JPEG and now there is your ad.
with a car or a Jeep from somewhere else. I bet you the art director would make me go in and retouch this out. But, and let me go bigger on this. You remember the healing brush? Remember how I can take the healing brush and get rid of this little white thing? They would totally make me take that out, okay? And I did tell you something that I didn't do. I need to go in and fix one more thing. So I'm gonna go back into the PSD file I'm going to zoom into the car and you remember that tread that I said that I would tell you how to fix it? All you have to do is go in, although it looks fine, maybe I should paint just a wee bit of stuff where? On this layer mask. So I take my paintbrush, I make it really inky dinky, really small, really small, put it at a hundred percent, you see what I'm doing here? Make the hardness go almost all the way to hard. Now. Let's get in to where the tread is, make it smaller, and do you see how I can make the tread come in like this? See how I can make the tread come in like this? So what I'm doing is I'm removing anything in the tread by just painting on the what? I'm painting where? I'm painting on the layer mask. Do you see how simple that was to do? Look at how nice and simple that is to do. So I can reestablish, see where the that should be actually taking all that out. Now do you see this edge that's around here? I can actually get rid of that edge by going like this. If I command click on the layer mask, you see what I just did? I can go, I want you to pay attention. I don't like that little white edge that was around this edge because I left some of that gray background. So I'm going to go to select. Remember, these are changes that you don't know until the end. Modify, contract, and I'll contract it by one pixel at a time until it gets to where I want. So I'm contracting it one pixel at a time. There we go. Now if I hit Command H to hide the selection, and I'm going to actually feather it by one pixel. By one pixel. Now, I don't want to work inside the selection. I want to paint outside the selection. Did you hear what I just said? I want to paint this white line that's around here, this leftover background, gone. Well, so far, if I paint, I'm painting inside. That's not good. So Command-Shift-I, I make sure I'm selected onto the layer mask. I make sure my brush is bigger. And if I can hit Command-H for you, let me go like this. If I can hit Command H to hide the selection, watch how that line is completely removed now. See how clean I have made that line? Look at how wonderful and quickly, very, very quickly. Let me go over to here. See that little white line that's inside of here? See, see it right there? See it? I now can take it out. See how nice that is? I'm, why? Because the selection has been contracted right? It's been contracted by one or two pixels. Then I can just come down here and remove all those horrible things from the tread. Let's move over to here. Look at that. Look at how horrible. I should be, I should be fired for that. Honestly, I should be fired. But now, should I be fired? No, because I just removed, because I'm painting on the outside of this selection. How did I do it? I made a selection of the layer mask, right? That's what I did first. I went to select, modify, contract by one pixel each time. There's one, select, modify, contract, two. Then I went to select what? Feather by one pixel. Then I went to select inverse. So now I'm not painting on the inside. Where am I painting? On the outside. And I hit Command H so I could see that silly, silly glow that's around here be gone. And look at how quickly I can take it and remove it. Look at around the bumper. This is terrible. I should be destroyed. I ruined it. So now I've got that beautifully gone there. Look at how I can go in and make this all this horrible glow that's around here, gone. Now you might think I'm diffusing that too much, but I don't think so. I think that's gorgeous because when I get back on this car, it now has a realistic feel into that background. Look, look at, there it is. Let me come in here, look at, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I need to come in here and now remove some of this stuff. I probably shouldn't have, I'm gonna command Z back. I probably should have only been doing one contraction. I'll do it again. Command click on it. Let's do one contraction. F um, select, modify, contract by one pixel. Select, modify, feather by one pixel. Inverse it. Command Shift I to inverse it. Command H. All right. 
now I can take it away just that far. Now look at how nice that looks. Look at how nice that looks all the way around this vehicle and it looks like it's melted and married with this whole background. I'm going to take that whole thing off the top. <gasps> this is so nice. I love doing things the right way. I love knowing how to edit and I love making one shape marry with another shape. That is a good looking ad. Take care. I'll see you on the next one. Remember, take your PSD file, um, just your normal PSD file. It has everything together. Practice this a few times and Dropbox it to me, okay? Don't make it a big deal with the Elevate Your Life or the text or the logos. Use my logos and let's now make this work. Thank you.